Now in this lecture, I'd like to continue our discussion on Lewis dot structures. Now before we only spoke about neutral species or neutral molecules. Now we're going to draw Lewis dot structures for charged species or charged molecules. So let's begin with A. In A we have an OH or a hydroxide molecule that has a negative one charge on the oxygen. Now that negative one charge on the oxygen simply means that oxygen has one more electron than it does in its neutral state. In other words, in its neutral state oxygen has eight electrons and eight protons. Now a charged negative one oxygen molecule has eight protons but now it has nine electrons. So let's draw our electron configuration for oxygen. So two electrons go into the 1s, two electrons go into the 2s, and five electrons go into the 2p. Now H stays the same because H is neutral and so we place one electron into our 1s orbital. So let's begin by first counting the total amount of valence electrons that we have. Remember, valence electrons are those electrons found in the outermost energy shell. For oxygen, that happens to be the n equals 2 shell. So 2 plus 7, uh, 2 plus 5 equals 7, so 7 valence electrons for O, and we have one electron in the valence electron of 1s for H. So we have all together eight electrons, eight valence electrons that we will have to place around our atoms. So let's begin by placing our oxygen and H adjacent to one another. So we have eight electrons. Let's begin by drawing a sigma or a covalent bond between oxygen and nitrogen. So once we draw this line, that basically means that one electron is being donated by H and one electron is being donated by O. Now this means that all the orbitals, meaning this 1s orbital, is completely filled for H. Because before, when H is by itself, it has one electron in its 1s shell, but now this electron is being shared, so we have two electrons in the 1s shell, and that means all electrons or all the orbitals of the H are completely filled. So we can't place any more electrons around our H. How about oxygen? Well, oxygen has more orbitals, right? When this orbital is filled, it has three more orbitals. So that means we can place the remaining six valence electrons into or around our oxygen. So we place a pair here, a place, we place a pair here, and we place a pair here. Now, notice in its neutral state, oxygen has six electrons. But because we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, this gives us 6 or 7 electrons. That means we're going to have a negative 1 charge on the oxygen. So this concludes our Lewis dot structure. Just to make sure, let's make sure we have the right amount of um, electrons. So our electron count. We have two electrons in the bonding or covalent bond and six non-bonding electrons surrounding our oxygen. So two plus six is eight. We begin with eight valence electrons. We end with eight valence electrons. Oxygen has a negative one charge. So this concludes part A. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have this BH4 molecule. Now, B is boron. Normally, boron has five protons and five electrons in its neutral state. But because this, have, this has a negative one charge, it has one more electron, so that means it has a total of six electrons and five protons. So two go into the 1s, two go into the 2s, and two go into the 2p. H still has that one electron in the 1s because it's neutral. Now, notice, however, now we have four H atoms. And that means when we're counting our valence electrons, we have not one electron from H, but four electrons from H. So four times one, so we have four electrons coming from H, and two plus two, four electrons coming from our boron. So altogether, we have eight valence electrons. So once again, we place our B in the middle, our central atom, and we place our H atoms around 
our B atom. So we begin by first creating sigma or covalent bonds. So we connect our B's and H's. And now we have four covalent bonds. So let's count how many electrons we have. So we begin with eight, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have completely used up all our balanced electrons. And that means that this is our Lewis structure. Now normally boron could form three bonds, so it has three electrons. But in this case, it has one, two, three, four, one more electron than it is in its neutral state. And that means that it has a negative one charge. So let's do our electron count. We have eight bonding electrons, right? Two, four, six, eight, and zero non-bonding. So we have a, a, a net of eight electrons, and that concludes our picture for B. Let's jump to part C. In part C, we have this ammonium atom, or NH4 positive. That means nitrogen has one less electron than it does in its neutral state. So, let's draw our electron configuration for N. One or two electrons go into the 2s, two electrons go into the 2, or two electrons go into the 1s, two electrons go into the 2s, and two electrons go into the 2p. Now normally, in a neutral atom, we would have three electrons go into the 2p. But because it has a plus one, that means it has one more proton than electron, so it has only two electrons in the 2p. H, once again, is neutral, so it has one electron in the 1s orbital. Once again, we count our balanced electrons. We have two and two, so four electrons coming from N, and one times four, so eight balanced electrons all together. So once again, the same story. We draw out our N, that central atom in the middle. We draw our four H's around, and we connect our uh, H's and N's. So notice we have two, four, six, and eight. So we have a total of eight balanced electrons. So we have used up our balanced electrons, and this must be the electron configuration for NH4. Notice that, once again, N is used to having five electrons. Here it has four electrons, one, two, three, four, so it has a plus one charge on the N, and these H's are neutral, so a net charge of plus one. Once again, our electron count, eight electrons coming from the bonding orbitals, or the bonding uh, electrons, and we have zero non-bonding uh, electrons, just like we had in this picture here. So, let's go to the last one, part D. In part D, we have NH2 with a minus one. So, right here we had a plus one, and here we have a minus one on the end. That means it will have <clears throat> <clears throat> that means it will have one more electron than it does in its neutral state. So instead of having three, electron in, three electrons in its 2p, it's going to have four electrons in its 2p orbital. So two go into the 1s, two go into the 2s, and four go into the 2p. H is once again neutral, it has one electron in the 1s. So we have two electrons, we have two um, we have two H atoms, so two times one, we have two electrons, balanced electrons coming from H, and two plus four, six electrons coming from N. So all together, once again, we have eight balanced electrons. So once again, we begin our drawing by writing or drawing N in the middle as the central atom and H's adjacent to it. So we connect our atoms, and now we are left with four valence electrons. Because we begin with eight valence electrons, we use up one, two, three, four, eight minus four is four, and because these orbitals are filled, we are left with filling the n orbitals. So we basically uh, put two here, we place two here, and we conclude our drawing because now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. We have four bonding and four non-bonding electrons. And because nitrogen is normally used to having five electrons, and in this case it has one, two, three, four, five, six, this end will have 
a negative one charge since the H's have a neutral charge an overall charge of negative one exists and this is in fact the correct Lewis dot structure for NH2 negative one.